ready. What's going on guys and welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Terabyte Reacts, man. We're in the house once again with some more slam dunk reactions, man. And I am happy to say I am proud. I am very proud of, of our team, Shohoku, right now. They're showing up and showing out. Showing them how it is done in this basketball world. You know, they doubted. They doubted us. Even in the midst of the game we were still getting doubts from far away lands people were saying that Kainen should be wrapping up their game against Shohoku but Shohoku is in the lead by two right now and I'm really proud of them man Akagi is back um, still waiting on a great offensive play for our boy Sakuragi is by far the best defender on the floor right now I don't care what nobody says um, and Rukawa in the, in the last episode he was the man he had the hot hand he was on fire it's just that the ball was not lit on fire but we know them hands you know what i'm saying it would have it would have been nice if he was cocky with it you know what i'm saying it was he was if he was cocky with it that imposed or something but this was back in the day you know what i'm saying and the thing about it is too the thing about it too i know they want to keep it very grounded but usually when players are that hot they are posing on you they are you know what i'm saying some people are are um very subtle about it don't get me wrong um but i wish they had a player that was like they know who they are and they know what they can do and they are just gonna give it to you you know what I'm saying? And when they hit shots, and if they're hitting points, points after points after points, they going to give it to you. They're going to be like, you can't guard me, homie. Calm down. You too small. You know what I'm saying? So I like, one of the things I, like, I love about watching sports is that aspect of it. Of course, you don't like it when the other team is doing it or somebody on the team you're not cheering for is doing it. Of course, you don't like it. But when it's your team, you want them to get up in players face and be like you ain't nothing homie you know what i'm saying you ain't nothing you better call time out you know what i'm saying i'm about to drop this on your head he got 25 points in the first half he did a lot he held it down while akaki was out and as i said before um he is the option on offense right now because mitsui is very well guarded in this game and also miyagi holding it down we know that miyagi is not a he's not a scorer you know what i'm saying he's not a scorer he's more of like a he's a facilitator he's a floor general so you know um but he's being well guarded as well so you just got to get the ball to the to the person who's who's playing well you know so yes we will continue i will see you guys for the review All right, two more episodes in the bag. I like it, man. I like it. I like what they're doing just from the storytelling vibes of this anime. Like, I like what they're doing. They're not doing too much. They're not doing too little. And you're right. You're, when you're writing a story like this, you know, where, you know, there's matches going on. And, and it's one of the things that Haikyuu does very well and that's why people are so drawn to haikyuu not only is it accurate to a fault you know what i'm saying it's you know what i'm saying it, it, it's so accurate to real to real volleyball and you know volleyball players are oh, are drawn to it volleyball coaches are drawn to it so i can imagine that maybe back in the day um you know nba players used to watch the show i'm not i'm you know maybe some high school players used to watch the show um you know it's not confirmed but i would 
think that maybe one or two i'm not gonna say not, but then again it might not even happen to be honest because you know back in the day anime was not as popular as it is now you know what i'm saying so maybe not you know um but in any case these two episodes were really good akagi is back they've devised a plan to take care of maki and you know him taking over the game and also jin taking over the game you know they went back up by 10 now it's back down to four so i i, I knew it was gonna be this type of game it's gonna go down to the wire where it's going to be back and forth baskets back and forth they got four minutes i think they got like four and a half minutes left in the game and you know um i'm really happy that they figured something out with animichi and his free th throws because um as they talked about rick barry you know um a lot of people don't remember that like i i couldn't remember his name i know there was one player in the nba you know of old that did that that shoot their free throws underhanded um and made it ridiculous amount of times like i remember reading about that you know i've never seen any video of it or anything like that but i remember because you, you know sometimes you're watching nba games and they just mention certain things you get what I'm saying? The commentators or something like that. Like they ju they will just mention some certain things that you would have never guessed that actually happened in the NBA, right? So um, people has done that when they're injured and have to take a free throw before they leave and stuff like that. Um, you know, I, I don't remember. I think it's like one player has done that before. He had to shoot the ball on the hand because he injured his hand or whatever. Um, yeah so it's not so outside of the scope to think that he would be able to make it because it's actually easier to be honest it's actually easier it's just that most players don't do it but it's actually easier to make free throws that way because you're actually throwing the ball up you know what i'm saying you might miss yeah you know what i'm saying you might miss it's actually harder to make free throws this way, but most players practice that so much that it just, you know, it just becomes a part of them. And they can shoot ridiculously high percentages in um, for free throws, right? But, you know, it's actually easier to throw something underhanded than it's actually to throw overhanded because you're throwing over and down, under and up so you can kind of gauge it a little bit better i don't know why it works like that but it just it feels more natural to throw stuff this way than to actually throw stuff this way you know what i'm saying i don't know i don't know why or why it's like that maybe for some people it's easier this way than this way i don't i don't know but um i think it's just easier you know so it's i was actually thinking like maybe he should th try to throw the ball underhandedly for the free throw, but I didn't think they were gonna do it in the anime. Like I was thinking it, but then I was like, they'll never do something like that. But here we go, you know, that's where we are. So I am happy to see what's going on, man. Can't wait to see what is going to be the result of this match. It's a great match. It's a great matchup and everything is good so far. Like I like what you're doing um and and sendo um you know if we come out of this match and having to play sendo and his and his brothers you know it's going to be a challenge because sendo does not and i mean when i say the guy does not underestimate anybody i don't know if it's because of the practice match we had with him but he just does not underestimate anyone and the thing about it is that out of everybody i think he respects sakuragi the most and he sees he saw the underlying talent of sakuragi during that match now we've never seen sendo from a hundred percent perspective yet so i don't know what the dude is capable of yet you get what i'm saying they just smashed the team 
basically by 100 points. So, I'm not saying they're bad. I know they're a very good team. You know, I know they're a very good team. It's going to be a tough match when we actually play against them. It's going to be a tough match, no doubt about it, if we do get through this match, which is a tough match also. So, um, as I said, man, I want to see Hanamichi make a great offensive play. He was about to make one, and Maki decided, oh, I'm going to intentionally foul you. But it's a, it was a very dangerous foul. You just don't do something like that when somebody is in mid-air. You don't do that because you could injure the player. If it wasn't for Sakuragi's bounciness or, you know, his endurance, you know, he could have injured him really bad. And then what? Because he, he fell the way how he fell. Like, I was a little worried there. But he just bounced right back up. And sometimes that happens. Some, some, some you know, players can take the bumps and the bruises, you know, more than the others. It's just that their career is not as long as most players. I could give you an example. Dwayne Wade. Dwayne Wade, the amount of bumps and bruises, the way how he played was so dynamic. Driving to the rim, falling on the floor. And it's just... Over time, it takes its toll on, toll on your body, and then you can't really, you know what I'm saying? Like, look look at the difference between a player like the Wade and some other players that have played above the rim or, you know, under the rim a lot. And, you know, if you look at most stuff, you know, D Wade's, you know, career highlights, it's not about his, his, his mid, he, he, he developed a um a post game you know later on in his career and stuff like that but for the most part in his early in his career it was just driving to the basket he had the midi he had the three-pointer but his main bread and butter was driving to the basket it's kind of like what you know kind of like d rose um the same you know what i'm saying and, and we know the history of d rose like he's just not that dynamic anymore um you know and I'm not saying it's because of that why he got injured or anything like that. Um, because your play style is your play style. It's just that you're not going to have, if you don't have the the body, like say a LeBron James and stuff like that, to be driving to the basket and falling on the floor. Or da -da -da, you know what I'm saying? Thing about LeBron is he's a truck. You get what I'm saying? So he's not when he makes when he drives to the basket, he's not ending up on the floor and you know and doing all this other stuff he doesn't need to because he just powers people out of his way and he just gets the easy layup he's a truck going to the basket so um it's a it was a very dangerous play man you know um so yeah mitsui is off his game what's going on with mitsui i don't understand what's going on with him he can't make a shot right now and maybe it's because you know he just couldn't get into rhythm that that's that could be the cause of it because he couldn't get into rhythm because he was so well defended in the first half of the game and now he's like trying to find that rhythm he can't find it and it happens it happens so thank you guys so much for tuning in as always man hopefully you guys um are enjoying these reactions let me know in the comment section you guys are the best leave a like on the video as always man subscribe if you are new leave a comment i'm out peace